Greetings, this is August 28th at 12 a.m. and we are looking at an image from the Earth Observatory website and it's showing us the smoke from August 22nd rolling across Canada. These were the fires in British Columbia and the Northwest Territories and this gives us an indication of the effect of western forest fires on the soils and the whole climatology across Canada and eastern North America. As you are probably well aware, Hurricane Harvey moved from the Gulf of Mexico into the state of Texas, bringing a lot of flooding and devastation. And I thought we could take a look at a computer model of it. I'm going to jump over to Windy and take a look at some images I saved as the hurricane crossed over onto land at Corpus Christi and you can see the wind pattern here. Uh, it's this counterclockwise uh, motion uh, pulling the wind into the center core. I did a measurement right in the eye. It was only showing 42 kilometers and that was as it crossed onto land. Looking at their weather forecast, it's rain, rain, rain. And if you'll notice, the temperature is virtually consistent, 24 degrees Celsius all the way across. But also look at the wind direction. The indicator arrow is slowly turning around counterclockwise. I want to see what the uh, wind speed would look like a little higher up. This is at 750 meters and it's going 133 kilometers an hour just outskirting the eye. Let's make a comparison with our province and our local area. We're looking at 3 kilometers an hour coming primarily from the east. There's not a lot of wind velocity right now, but this could change on Tuesday. It could go up to 18, 19 kilometers an hour, and it could have gusts up to 30 kilometers an hour. I'm not seeing any precipitation, but I am seeing a little bit warmer temperatures, 28, uh, maybe 29 degrees. Then it looks to get cooler on Wednesday and for the rest of the week, uh, showing some cloud cover uh, maybe at the end of Friday. Let's jump now to the MODIS infrared for the Elephant Hill wildfire. And this is how it looked around 5 p.m. two days ago on August 26. And you can see there were a few new hot spots just south of High Hume. Uh, this is looking at the radiative power scan at the same time. And we can see there was a little bit of heat south of Pressey Lake and south of Mount Jim, also a little bit uh, south of High Hium. Now we're going to roll into the MODIS infrared at approximately 8.30 p.m. That's about four hours ago. And we can see there are some new infrared south of High Hium and on the western fringe of that concentration. If we zoom in south of High Hium, you can see where these new infrared hotspots are being indicated. They are the red ones and to clarify they can be off 500 meters to a kilometer from their intended heat source. Let's shift over to the radiative power where we see the red, the yellow, the green. That is the highest intensity. That is where the most radiative power is being generated. I'd like to switch over to the Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite. That's the VIIRS. We're looking at calibration at 350 meters as opposed to the larger 750 meter of the MODIS system. I would like to draw your attention southeast of Pressey Lake, approximately three to four kilometers. There is some new intensity there. I'm seeing maybe a 12 hour spot. Here we are looking north of Young Lake and I am seeing infrared around the Spectacle Lakes to the west of them. And there's more eastward progression showing on this system than there is on the MODIS system. However, there are no indications of new hot spots in the last 24 hours. Not the same story south of High Hume. And here we see uh, the VIIRS system displaying 
maybe 20 hot spots and they're on the western fringe of this fire pocket and if you look uh, to the left of center there is one isolated new hot spot sitting out there so this is an area to watch for um, it can be a flare-up it could also be part of a controlled burn I took a look again and that outlying spot appears to be between 343 road the South High Heum sort of loop and uh, 3400 road the Clinton Loon Lake FSR and remember that these indications could be 350 to 700 meters off their intended source and if we move north to Highway 24, this is Drive BC's Sheridan Highway Cam, and it's looking westwards towards Lone Butte and 93 Mile. And at the time of this photo taken before sunset, uh, there might be a little bit of haze perceptible in the distance and mostly a brilliant sunset. And I've just checked back at the Begbie Cam, and it's a very nice picture. Uh, we're, we have that deep blue in the sky and the lone street lamp. I have heard word that the fire is now 50% contained and as we can see the wildfire crews have done an excellent job of clearing the area of infrared and in the entire western flank. They have made significant progress and our only concern right now are those winds that may come in on Tuesday uh, 20 kilometers an hour, maybe gusting up to 30, dare I say, 40 kilometers an hour. So check the regional bulletins and alerts below. Thank you very much for watching, and as I gather new information, I'll post updates. Be safe, everyone.